to continue where I started about um, the kids that I met at Juvenile Hall. Now, keep in mind, I came from the suburbs, you know? Everybody was pretty clean cut. Um, you know, you know, the Asians weren't as as tatted as like the, the essays, man. The essays, I seen like 13 year old kids with like fucking South Central on his neck and cursive, you know, 13, I was like, damn. I was like, honestly, I thought that shit was pretty hard. I seen, um, you know, the essays like, you know, S-U-R right here and um, Old English, lowercase, you know, shadow route. I, you know, I thought that was pretty, pretty cool too. You know, devil horns right here, bald, but with like horns. He was from I think he was from 18th Street because I think it was like I had a one eight. Yeah, I seen like a lot of crazy shit. like my cellmates, some cellmates that I, my first cellmate was um, like some essay guy from uh, Playboys. Playboys is um, like a hood in um, L.A. He was kind of like a Baisa. Um You know, Baisa is like more of a, it's kind of like a fob. But for a Mexican version, it was cool. He was laid back. All my cellmates were cool. Um, I didn't really have any beef with my cellmates. I remember the first guy from Playboys because I, he would always just be out his window throwing out gang signs, you know, to to the other windows, and he would always just be doing stuff with his with his hands. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? He's like, oh man, I'm just blowing up their hood. So he would be throwing up their hood and just just blowing it up, and I thought that was pretty funny. Um, my second cellmate was some black some black guy from LA. I think it was from South Central. Now keep in mind, you know, juvenile hall is filled with kids. You know, there's no one over, you know, seventeen, I believe. You know, this guy was probably sixteen or fifteen, but he conducted himself like he was fucking forty years old. Talked to him, really laid back. We just talked about life, you know, just I think he had some kids. He asked me if I had kids, and we just, we just, you know, just chopped the shit. And, um, you know, one day we were walking out the chow um, in our building. We would just walk out in lines, and they would hand out, hand out trays uh, for us to get food. And then he would walk in front of me, and then one day he didn't even grab the tray. He just walked up to some other big guy, big Mexican guy. You know, I'm pretty sure, like, a lot of people were intimidated by that big Mexican guy, too, because of the size. So he just, he skipped that tray, and he just, he walked up to him. He was, hey man, I heard you talking shit. And the Mexican guy was like, I was like, what? And he started just, you know, welling at him. I was like, what the fuck? I was standing right behind him. I was like, oh shit. So they tackled him down. And then they took him back to my room. And, I, you know, you know, I kind of cut, you know, day room off early. And I went back to my cell just to chop it up. And I was like, hey man, what's going on? You know? Um, the fuck was that about? He's like, oh man, that was talking shit since I got here. I was like, oh shit. Um, when I was in the KL pod, the other building, I was, I was, I was, um, I sold up with some guy from Florence, I believe. And he would just tell me his, his war stories about shootings and stuff like that. I was also sold up with, uh, some, some small black guy from, I think he was from rolling sixties and he was young. He was like 14, 15, but he would just tell me stories about how he would, him and his homies would go rob banks. He told me from out of state, you know, because it was like, less helicopters and whatnot and he, sh he would show me his bullet wounds and some of those bullet wounds were fucking still fresh you know some he told me that he still had bullet wounds in him and then like and then sometimes we would have to all congregate in um a waiting area where all the different buildings come together so people you know people that's waiting for court people that's waiting for movement would actually just be all together and just waiting in one place um you know i remember some people some some black guy came in, he was really out, he was really a big mouth, you know, he would come in, you know, the first time I saw him, he was like, as soon as he walked in, he was like, hey man, I don't go fuck, I'll fight anybody here. You know, everybody, you know, now that, that was pretty hard, you know, I think that was, that was pretty chin, you know, you don't, you have to have some balls to go to like a group of fucking strangers, that's probably like 60, 60 of us in there, all different races, blacks, Mexicans, whites, Asians, actually not that many Asians, probably just me, but, you know, and he had a cast on. So I was like, man, this guy's kind of this is not a right up here, you know? But maybe like a few weeks later, um, that, that that black guy, that, that mature black guy, cellmate, 
the one that conducted himself like he was 40 years old, you know. He had an incident with that guy. I think he he kind of stepped on his shoes and the, the, the big mouth was, hey bro, what's, hey, what's up, man? You fucking stepped on my shoes. And then my old cellmate was like, man, what? He's like, man, you stepped on my shoes. And then my old cellmate was like, just put up his hands, he's like, hey, you can't see these, right? And then that guy just shut the fuck up. There's a lot of different characters too. And then, you know what? I'll go into I'll go into more depth about another a fight I almost got in on my next video. But for this lesson, man, you know, it doesn't matter how loud you bark. You know, I've, I always respect the, you know, the quieter, the quieter G's. That you know, they don't need to talk. You know, when it's it's time to get shit cracking, you know, they just let their their fists talk. They don't need to, you know, bark wolf tickets and whatnot. So, remember, it's always better to, you know, just keep calm, keep centered. You don't need to, you know, say shit, talk shit. Usually the loudest ones are like the most pussiest. So, remember, when you don't have anything good to say, don't say it at all. So stay tuned for my next video for um, another interesting story.